I'll never forget the first time I heard Ido Portal say, can you flip? Can you invert? Can you crawl? Or is it just aesthetics? And at that particular time, I couldn't do any of those things, but now I can. And so I wanted to make a video to help you with the easiest flip, the easiest inversion, and the easiest crawl to get you started so that you can say you can do those things too. I don't have to tell you to do a good warm up before you do this stuff, so I've just done mine. It could rain here, judging by the uh, frizziness in my hair. It is hot, the Sunshine Coast, so hot as balls out here. Let's take a look at the monkey flip, the macaque, because I really do think this is the easiest flip to learn. Now, you don't necessarily have to leave the ground, but I think to be really a flip, we need to start to introduce some gap between us and the earth. So let's take a look at the monkey flip. What I love about the macaque or the monkey flip, there's many, many variations, but you can really be an absolute beginner and learn it. So you can start by planting one hand behind you. The fingers need to be facing around that way. And we're just gonna start by walking around the hand. Like this, facing the same way that we started. It's as simple as that. So you wanna get a few reps of those in. Make sure the fingers are facing behind you in a way so that you can pivot and turn on that hand, like so. Next, we wanna try and add a little bit of a hop. So if we can try to hop to 90 degrees, that would be a nice start, like so. Just a hop like that, and we can even hop all the way around back to the starting position. Fingers facing away, Hop, hop, simple as that. The power for the monkey flip comes from the hips extending and this arm throwing up and we want to bridge and arch to create our power. So just getting to 90 degrees again, we can start to add a little bit of that in. Hup. Like so. You can even get a bit of a wind up and you can start to feel the float start to happen. Once you're comfortable getting to 90 degrees, we want to see if we can get even further around. So we get our wind up and over to 180 degrees facing the same way. Like so. If the two-footed jump is feeling too challenging at this stage, there is another variation, the Shapuri Koro. I hope I said that right, where what we can actually do is take this foot and step out one foot at a time, like so. Create. I did a longer tutorial just on the macaque. I'll put a link to that somewhere here on your screen so you can go and check that out. And it's also one of the skills in my locomotion flow course. I recommend you learn this skill because it links up to all the other soft acrobatics, handstands and locomotion skills. So you can create some really cool combinations with it or you can just play around with it on its own. This is macaque to macaque. So you can start to play around with combinations just of that one skill alone. Heaps of cool stuff you can do with it. Like so, to get that flipping action. You can use two hands too instead of just one. And you're starting to get into that back handspring country, but without the wrist, because you're still going around the side. See so yeah, I'm going around the side, I'm not going straight over backwards. So it's a bit easier psychologically. The other cool thing you can do 
with the macaco is you can start to incorporate more of a handstand situation where you can really slow it down, use your arch to make it a little bit more elegant or you can stick with the monkey flick, the flip to create your flip. The key to taking the macaque more vertical is instead of going around the side, especially with this throwing arm, instead of going this way, we start to throw it straight over and back. And that helps generate the direction more vertical rather than around the side. Vertical. Like so. I did a longer tutorial just on the macaque. I'll put a link to that somewhere here on your screen so you can go and check that out. And it's also one of the skills in my locomotion flow course. I recommend you learn this skill because it links up to all the other soft acrobatics, handstands and locomotion skills. So you can create some really cool combinations with it or you can just play around with it on its own. This is macaque to macaque. So you can start to play around with combinations just of that one skill alone. Heaps of cool stuff you can do with it. While I just catch my breath, I'll show you. Look at all the ants' nests down here. I don't know if you can see all of those, but I share this lawn with millions of green ants that like to bite me. <laughs> so I try not to stay in the one place too long. And I don't know if you can see up here, under my eaves, can you see up there? Wasps, wasp nests. Uh, so far they haven't attacked me too often. Uh, we do get snakes around here, but generally not out here where I'm practicing, which is good. Um, but yeah, lots of spiders. Straya. <laughs> the soft cartwheel or the owl or the AU uh, as it's known in capoeira is a great way to start getting upside down and like the uh, flip progressions I just showed you you can start uh, lower level and add inversion as you go so let's just take a look at the setup we can start from a low squat position and start with what's called the roll a so it takes the cartwheel position the feet sweep across and we finish back in our low squat. Back the other way. That is the mechanics that we'll be using and starting to invert for our soft cartwheel. Now let's look at turning this baby upside down. So, same hand placements. We're gonna cock one leg, just practice Cocking one leg up and behind us. So it will look like this. Notice the hands are slightly behind the feet. Here, cock that leg, start to get lift off. Notice too, this heel is pushing behind me to create the cantilever for the elevation. And then as we get more confident, we can start to lift that foot off and transfer to the other side. Try and make a diamond with the feet in the middle. You may have to start this off with a bit more speed to make it through, which is ideal. Like so. What I love about this soft cartwheel is it's very low risk. You start low to the ground, so if you do fall, it's not that big a deal. You don't have far to travel. As you get better with the shape, you can start to slow it down and look for more control, make it into more of a press. Like so. That of course takes some time to develop the strength and the awareness 
in the body and the shoulder strength. But when you're beginning, use your speed. Speed is your friend to get through it. Like so. And you are inverting. The lizard crawl. When I first saw the lizard crawl, it really sucked me into the whole movement culture scene. Just seeing how reptilian somebody can move their body was just inspiring. The strength, the mobility, uh, the grace of it. So let's take a look at the progressions for the lizard crawl, starting from easiest through to the harder variations where we get into that low lizard. The easiest way to start your lizard is from the plank position. It's a contra lateral action or skill, meaning we're using our opposite hands to foot to balance. So you wanna get in the habit of being able to support yourself contra laterally. To start the forward action of the lizard, start with one hand, pull forward with that hand, reach forward, and that will pull the contra opposite knee behind the elbow and we go again so it's a little bit like a ladder a key component to the low lizard is being able to the birds here have no respect That's the Australian kookaburra laughing at me again. The laughing bird. Still going. As I was saying, the key to the low lizard is being able to swivel the hips. So from our plank position, if we're doing that forward action, notice the knee is behind the elbow. I want you to swivel the hips pivoting on the toes of the long leg. Come back, go again. Once you're comfortable with that, we can start to get used to sweeping the hands in a swimming sort of action. So we reach, hip goes down, swim over, Hip goes down, swim over, hip goes down. Next, to get a sense of getting low, let's add in a press. So starting from our plank once again, we reach, we pivot our hip and we press down, touch the head and the chest if you can on the ground, back up, go again. At this point, the low lizard is pretty much there. If you can press down, the next progression is staying down, staying low, trying to keep the hips as low to the ground as possible. So, starting from our plank, we reach forward, we get down low, we sweep the hand. For our low lizard. Show you one from the back on so you can start to see what the feet are doing. They can sweep across and over the other foot to give it a more dramatic effect. Like so. Once you're feeling comfortable with those three skills, you can start to look at how to integrate them and combine them together. There's no rules for this, just, you can start to just have a play around. That sort of thing, there's literally dozens of combinations you could use just with these three skills alone.
Whew. It is hot, hot as balls. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> I'm in a glass cage of emotion. <laughs> what movie? Drop me a comment if you know that one. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's it for the video. We covered flips, we covered inverting, and we covered crawling. Three things us primates should all be able to do. And we didn't really even get into hanging or anything like that. So these are some cool patterns to work on, get in your game. If you want to learn in much, much more detail than this, I have a whole locomotion flow course, which uh, has dozens and dozens and dozens of skills, many, many, many progressions and variations. It goes into a great load of detail and depth with like lesson plans and structure and uh, just way more than you can do here in a single YouTube video. So I will leave a link to that in the description below if you're keen on that. I have a free lizard crawl guide with over 13 different lizard crawl variations and progressions. That's absolutely free. You can check that out. Uh, otherwise, yeah, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Uh, I love your support. I love hearing from you. I love getting your messages. Connect with me on Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.